Okay, um, we're going to get started with sampling distribution. So what I want to do is start with some of the little definitions we need to know. So um, basically, we're going to be talking a lot about in this unit is um, the idea of we don't know an answer. So in this case, we don't know a true population um, parameter. So the words that we're going to look at first are we got parameter and parameter says everything about a population. So it's the real answer. So it's literally like the true answer. And there's two types of population parameters that we're going to deal with. The first one is the letter P, and that stands for the true proportion. The other one we're going to see, and you've seen this one before, is mu, and that's going to be the true mean. So we need to be careful now, because anytime we use the letter P or the letter mu, we're talking about the real answer, like really what it is. Um, in the real world, we don't know. So what we end up doing is we end up having to get a statistic. And when we do a statistic, what is going to happen is um, that is going to be taken from a sample. So what we are going to do is we're going to take a sample to estimate the population parameter. It estimates the parameter. And the way that this works is as follows. For a proportion, we are going to take P with the little hat over the top of it, and that is going to be called the sample proportion. And we're going to take X bar, which is going to be called the sample mean. So what we do is we use the X bar to estimate the mu, we use the P hat to estimate the P. Um, there's uh, one other one that I want you to be aware of, and you have seen it before. Um, when we actually talk about um, let's put it here, sigma, we're talking about the true standard deviation. And we actually use S as the sample standard deviation. So this is some notation. And we are going to kind of, <clears throat> I'm going to be a stickler about that notation because when I, when I actually talk about that, um, College Board really needs to, you to be aware of that. Um, so what happens is, we are going to have something, I'm going to use some notes that I've done before. Um, we have three different types of distributions that we're going to have. The first one is called the population distribution. It provides the values of all the variables for all the individuals. If we have this, we don't need the statistics. Like if we actually know what the real distribution of, of weights is, we don't need to do um, statistics. What we are going to do is we're going to come up with a sampling distribution. And the sampling distribution is going to be how we estimate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take samples of the same size over and over and over again. And what will happen is it kind of visually is this. So let's say I wanted to figure out the true proportion. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to talk to 100 people. And I'm going to get their opinion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that average opinion and that's going to be a P hat. And what's going to happen is I'm going to keep doing that same sample size over and over and over and over and over again. And what will happen is we'll be able to put those P hats on a number line. So let's say, you know, we're, we're talking 50%. And what's going to happen is that's 100 people, that's 100 people, that's 100 people, that's 100 people. And we just keep doing this over and over and over again. And we keep talking and talking to more and more people. And before you know it, we end up building ourselves a sample distribution. And every one of these little dots is a sample. And what we're going to say is that if we took the average of all these samples, it'd be right here. And that would be our estimate of what the real proportion was. So in this case, you know, 55% or something along those lines. But that's what a sample proportion is. Um, that's what a, that's what a uh, distribution, uh, distribution of sample is, and then a sample distribution is. So. Um, we talked a little bit about in class today on what we were going to do. So what I want to do is go over this, check your understanding, kind of hit you with all the information. So what this one says is the James family has five children, one, two, three, four, five. And what we want to do is figure out the 10 possible samples of size two. So J and A, Jocelyn and Elise are eight and eight. So their average eight is eight. Their average age is eight. So the next one we'll do is we'll do Jocelyn and Erica. <clears throat> so Jocelyn. Jocelyn and Erica, when we, when we average their age together, we're going to get 11 because 8 plus um, 16. Oh, that's wrong. Someone's someone up there. 8. No, it's going to be, I'm sorry, Jocelyn and Erica, it's going to be 12. I missed 12. Um, we'll take Jocelyn and Michael. 
and Jocelyn and Michael, 8 and 14, 22, 22 divided by 2 is 11. We'll take Jocelyn and Sarah, 8 and 18 is 26. We average that, we get 13. <clears throat> um, the next one we're going to take is we're going to take Elise. We're going to take Elise and Michael. Elise and Michael's average age is 11. We're going to take Elise and Erica, and their average age is 12. We're going to take Elise and Sarah, and their average age is going to be 13. Then we're going to take Michael and Erica. Michael and Erica, 14 and 16 is 30. Average age is 15. We're going to take Michael and Sarah. Michael is 14 and Sarah is 18. 14 and 18 is 32. Divided by 2 is 16. And then we're going to take Erica and Sarah. And that's 16 and 18, which is 34. Divided by 2 is 17. So what ends up happening on this one is we can go ahead and we can make ourselves a sampling distribution. And that sampling distribution starts at eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a dot above each one. So JA is eight. We've got two at 11. We've got two at 12. We got two at 13, we got one at 15, one at 16, and one at 17. And this is our sampling <clears throat> distribution of X bar. And this is the um, X bar of ages is what we're dealing with. So what we're looking at, what is the mean of this? The mean is we add them all up. And we divide by um, divide by ten. So what ends up happening is what I'm going to say is the mean of all of these x bars when I add them up. What I mean is eight plus eleven plus eleven plus twelve plus twelve plus thirteen plus thirteen plus fifteen plus sixteen plus seventeen. When I add all those up and I divide by, I got how many kids in this? Uh, how many? Uh, Pairs of this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Divide that by ten. It's going to give me twelve point eight years. But what happens if I average their ages? So I'm just going to go ahead and average their ages. I'm going to go ahead and say eight plus eight plus fourteen plus sixteen plus eighteen. And there's five kids in the family. When I divide by eight, I also get twelve point eight years. So basically, what this is saying is that if I take the average of all of these samples, I end up getting the real answer. Now, I know in this case, it makes more sense just to average the five kids. However, imagine that there are 5 million people. You wouldn't want to go and average 5 million people. That's a lot of work. What you're going to do is you're going to take samples of the same size over and over and over again, and eventually you'll get close to it. So what will happen is I might only need to take, you know, 30 samples of size 100 out of 50 million, out of 5 million people, and I could get a good idea of what the average age is. And in this case, um, it says, is it an unbiased estimator? Unbiased estimators is when we're talking, are the means the same? Are these two means the same? Yes, they are. So yes, it's an unbiased estimator. It's an unbiased estimator. Because the mean of all those X bars is equal to the true mean. Um, suppose we had taken samples of size three instead of size two with the variability of the sampling distribution of the sample be larger or smaller. What you're going to find out is as sample size increases, the variability, variability will decrease. So um, that's our first little bit. I'm going to do another video. It'll be the other part we talked about today. But um, <clears throat> the big thing you want to take out of this is we want to get the vocabulary down. So that as we move forward into actual inference, you kind of have an idea of what this uh, vocabulary is. So again, we always want to use the um, reflection to give me any kind of feedback. And um, we'll get started with the next lesson, the next class.